Frank. Frank, mind it, man. Can I be frank? Is all about capturing real, authentic, unedited conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This fella helped along. He's got a long tail, tit, <laughs> as you can see why. Uh, Great isn't name. Isn't he cool? Isn't he? Yeah, he is pretty cool. Yeah. I'm going to give you this here. All right. Uh, let me put that if you can. In here somewhere. Yeah, somewhere along those. Now I have hit the record button just so you oh, know. Right. Okay. Not that there there isn't supposed to be an on. Oh, we can still say arse, can we? Oh, we can say you can say whatever you want. Yeah, um, and you edit this afterwards. Is that what you do? Well, or, then, or the not? idea is not to edit it. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, unless you abuse somebody verbally, which I can't see that. Try that be your your. <laughs> So I will just I'll just go with what I was saying then, Frank, yeah, about, about this this um, piece by Alex Huxley called Likely. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's even a poem, but go on. he says, it's dark because you're trying too hard. Yeah. Likely, child, likely. Learn to feel, learn to do everything likely. Yes, feel likely, even though you're feeling deeply. Okay. Just likely let things happen and likely cope with them. I was such a preposterously serious in those days, such a humorous little prig. Such a humorous little prick. prick. Yeah, likely, child, likely. It's the best advice ever given me. When it comes to dying, even nothing ponderous, portentous, or emphatic. Just the fact of dying and the fact of the clear light. So throw away your baggage and go forward. There are quicksands all about you, sucking at your feet, trying to suck you down into fear and self-pity and despair. That's why you must walk so lightly, lightly, my darling, on tiptoes and no luggage, not even a sponge bag. Completely unencumbered. I, I like the idea of, of like a ballet dancer. Do you, you know the you know the Van Morrison song, "Tripping Lightly." You know, like just like a ballerina. No, I don't. Song. He's a great song, and it's like you know, um, but that that we can kind of walk around with ballet shoes. Well, uh, what is interesting, um, the the thing that struck me there now was the um, it was even in death, or even in dying. Yes, as I have this thing in my mind about this idea of. Uh, dying well I don't know where that's come yeah. from but dying without the need to um, strive or you know die having known you've lived but I don't is there such a thing as dying well you know this idea of trying to be young all the time or yeah. I say my dad died well my dad died about four nearly four years ago now Frank okay. and, sorry to hear and yeah but it was, was, it was, a, it was a, he, he led a great life you know and he, and he led a great death yeah. And he didn't hang around too long, you know. He fell, broke his hip, and didn't get home. And and I, I said to him, he was in the hospital, like, and I was saying, you know, I said, what was it like in the ambulance? Dad? He said, oh, geez. he said, I thought, he says, I thought this is the last time I'll get home, you know. And I said, what were you thinking then? He says, he says, I said, I won't be long till I'll be playing cards with the lads, <coughs> and because all his faiths that he played poker with are all are all dead, and he sees yeah. them in heaven, and he was looking forward to playing poker with them again, you know, taking yeah. a few bob off them. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 and and he was serious about that. He wasn't trying to be cool or anything, you know. Yeah. It was just that was that was his belief that the lads he went horse racing with and gambling with and acting the maggots with them, whatever, you know. They were a nice gang, you know. And but he used to love poker sessions. Yeah. And and. Uh, um, and I have lovely memories of him at, uh, even as a kid you know okay. I remember coming down Stevens' morning and the morning after Stevens' night on the 28th morning 27th morning and the local priest was there for the crying and, and um, geez, the priest had lost a whole Christmas collection in the night before at the poker <laughs> 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 he was writing out checks to pay my dad whatever he owed him at the poker <laughs> But there was always kind of lovely <laughs> old stories. You know? Oh, brilliant. And um, I'm sure the priesters have paid in are all dead and gone at this stage. Anyway, so. oh, lovely. I love the fact that he used yeah. the collection. <laughs> <laughs> we always knew that, but yeah. it's nice to hear it. Yeah. But I was thinking about his death, you know, was, was exactly what he would have wanted. You know, he was big in the football, so there was a big, you know, kind of um, a guard of honour for him coming into the town and the footballers were all there and, you know, past and present and, and stuff. And I thought, you know, the church was jammers like and 
and uh, I did the eulogy in the church and it was absolutely jam packed. But I was thinking, you know, would I like that for myself? And then it's kind of that's his generational thing, I think, really. And mm-hmm. I used to be thinking about where would I like to be buried and or would I would like to be cremated or who would I like to be buried beside? Do you know something? It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter, yeah. Do well, you know, I, I mean, in if, if it matters to someone that's left behind me what to do with me. Then let them do. You're off the hook, like really, at that point. You're, yeah. you're, 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 you it's in your 70s and your 80s and you're still striving to try and uh, I don't know what yeah. but and it's even then in death some can uh, go, last for ages you mm. know uh, the body can just keep going mm. and uh, I don't I don't know what it is but I suppose in my mind I've always had this idea that um, of dying well not always mm. but in recent times mm. um, that there's something beautiful about that that the there's no not regrets so I wish I had done that and I wish mm. I'd lived this way or been this way that there's not that constant um yeah feeling for it yeah I think striving in general I mean we could we could be striving now to do a really good interview you know? yeah and we'd That'd be exhausted we would yeah you know, wouldn't we like just, just trying too hard you know and, I remember and that's like in that poem yeah. as well yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah it's dark because you're trying too hard yeah. likely child likely yeah. yeah, yeah, it is like that. Yeah, yeah, and I remember getting caught on it. I thought I had. It's funny, uh, you know. Life teaches you lessons all the time. Oh, you think yeah. you learn something, and you have to go back and learn it again. Yeah. But I, I was, I, I went back to, you know, I mean, I, so I had given up kind of striving for material stuff, you know. Yeah, and move this um, into your hand over there. Right? Yeah, <laughs> and and um, uh, and that was a great relief, you know. Just you know, and again, it comes, it comes with, you know, a bit of age, a bit of maturity. You don't have to be cool or uncool or whatever the fuck you're know, striving to be. But, yeah. But um, uh, or to achieve or to have more this or more that or a flash of a car or mm-hmm. whatever it might be. But but I remember going back into college there, you know, a few years ago, back to Trinity to do a um, masters in clinical supervision, so supervising other therapists. Mm-hmm. But but um, there was a bit of ego in it. You know, and and uh, I got in my way. Like I did the did the thing and got through it and all that. But but it it I I, I found it was just another sense of striving. Really, it was another ego trip. You know, it was just seeking, striving, and it looked a bit classier than looking for a Porsche or something or whatever. But yeah, it was a different it was sort a, of but seeking. It was, but it was the same kind of. Um, and what do you think you were uh, looking for in that moment? And what do you think it is you're looking for? Some uh, acknowledgement or something of of that I was good enough to do it, and there was a snobbish bit about it. it I needed it to be in Trinity, yeah. You know, I needed it to be top university, um, and um, probably was kind of fulfilling a childhood bucket list rather than an adult bucket list. Okay, and, but 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 it was it was it was ego, yeah. It was ego getting in the way really. There was, there, was, there was benefits out of it, you know, and to even to learn about the ego out of it, you know. Yeah. But, um, so I would have felt, going in, I would have felt a little bit, this is my comfort zone. Mm. And that I almost, the imposter syndrome maybe, you know, so it was good to get that out of my way, like this, that I was entitled to be any place on the earth as much as any other human being, you know. Yeah, it was, that's, it's, um is that it's validation is it constantly uh, to validate validate me yeah 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 tell me i'm good enough yeah tell me i'm good enough it's uh, funny yeah. like um yeah. i did mention the uh, jim carrey downstairs but, but another one of the things that he said in this was that everything that he was doing in his life was trying to uh, cover up the the very depths of that he felt worthless in behind it all and everything was an outward way mm. to protect himself mm. um and but obviously to greater and lesser degrees that's what we all do with it like it's well i think it's a very nice thing if 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 um 
if you know, as a parent, Frank, if you give your children, you know, I remember you telling me years ago, like you'd like to get out of their way, yeah. do this job, you know. And I think if you give them a sense of self worth, mm. do you know that 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 they're absolutely loved for who they are, not who they could be, you know. Yeah. And and uh, never mind who they should be, but but even who they could be is still just kind of like you know. I see your potential to be this, and so this kind of like a, there's an encouragement to be something else, you know. And even that is in their way, really. I think you know if they know that just as they are, the tree that the tree out in the garden just stands there, and it's a bit this way, and the other tree is a bit that way. But no one goes out thinking, "Geez, maybe we should try and lift this, this and twist this branch over this way." The tree is just there, and, and we accept yeah. it as it is. But you will put if there's something blocking it, getting the light. You'll move the stuff out of the way as yes. best you can, yeah. but when it's at such an age that it needs it, yes. Like, um, I suppose the idea then it would be uh, like my Jack would play video games all day, mm. every day, and if you let him, oh yeah, if I let him, <laughs> so I can't. So yes, there is uh, that. There is that kind of, um, <coughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I might. Will I show you this? Oh, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Is, is it, can I show it to you now because of the way this is on? This is recording. I'll tell you what it is. It might be better, and then I can. Okay. Uh, uh, he basically says, "This is Jim Carrey, is it?" This is Jim Carrey, but it's <clears> it's, it's a, it's an interesting quote. To, um, it's, it's, I think you'd think it's because it's kind of what we were talking about downstairs. But he basically says, um, at a certain point in your career, when you come, when you make it, we'll say, mm-hmm. or you you've reached that point and you've put all this armory together to get to this place that you, you you know whatever you were striving for or whatever it is and the, there'll come a time that either you have to let go of that mm. and and be exactly who you are and risk being loved or hated or you you can you continue with that armory as as the as the real you falls into the grave Basically, and and it's this uh, <coughs> thing of this authentic self mm. versus um, this armory that we present to the world, almost. At some point, when you create yourself to make it, uh, you're going to have to either let that creation go, and and take a chance on being loved or hated for who you really are, or you're going to have to kill who you really are and fall into your grave grasping onto a character that you never were. Yeah, I, think, I think that idea of, of armory, and they, they, I think it comes from, I don't know if Jim Carrey was familiar with bioenergetics, but, but they talk about body armor. Okay. And and um, bioenergetics is 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 um, not bioenergy now. Some people would know bioenergy, but but bioenergetics is, is a completely separate thing. But it was based on the work of um, Wilhelm Reich and and um, Alexander Lowen. But <coughs> they 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 posited that there's like as we are young, very small, mm-hmm. that that we build up this body armor uh, to protect ourselves against whatever environment that we're in. Yeah. And, and and that we all fall into five different categories. One okay. of, we're all in one of five. We love our categories. Come on. Yes. <laughs> so that, that when you look at human beings, even physically now you can see um, that they might fit into one of these five places. Okay. And and so just very briefly, um, so the first body armour would be um, so, so the, ty- the names of them aren't very pleasant because they come from a defence against something that's negative, you know. Yeah. So, but, but they also have very positive things. So, but the first one is a schizoid character, okay. and it's where they um, where they get a, a fright uh, very early on, even at birth or in the first few weeks or months, mm. and they go. You know, you probably know this. Like if a baby gets a fright, small baby, they go up into the earth, <gasps> you know, and, and yeah. the energy's all gone up here. Okay. So maybe somebody like um, Ryan Torberty or somebody would be in that kind of category. Right. So they they they're very bright, and maybe a like a history piece of it, an intellectual and all that. So yeah. they're very very most of the energy goes up in that space. But the body then 
even if they eat a lot, they still don't really, maybe older in life they might, but, but in general they tend to be quite, okay, quite that's slim. That's very, very interesting. And, yeah. and, so, and, and so there's a whole load of the other, other kind of um, characteristics that go along with that, that character type. And then the yeah. next one then is, just after that you have, you know, what Freud would term the oral phase, you know, and so it's called the oral character. Where you know, like the four months, six months old, everything is into the mouth. You know, every blooming thing they're crawling on the floor, everything is into the mouth. You know, right. so uh, they're all their focus is around the mouth, and okay. and of course the breastfeeding and the bottle and all that, and waking up, and so some interruption in that, maybe even too much feeding or not enough feeding, or or even a metaphorical not getting enough or too much of something. You know, yeah, and so the kind of people that would always be. Maybe having a bottle of water all the time. Nothing's wrong with drinking a bottle of water, but but or, or sweets are kind of maybe if you were going out with someone to be kind of mm, kissing you like this, you know, all the time, you know, something <laughs> kind of like a kind of a sucking of of energy or something. Okay. You now then they have a lovely, lovely, pleasant, calm way about them. You know, so there's a love to bring a lovely presence with them. Right. So so it's kind of like, but that would be the second uh, body armor. Okay. Uh, and then the third one then would be. Uh, the next phase then will be the autonomy stage. So you know when the kids kind of say, when they start to walk and they're doing their potty training and I can do it by myself mm. or I can do it by my own self. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And it's this kind of terrible tools kind of space, you know. Yeah. So they, they have this, um, a, what's called, it's called a masochistic character. So if there's an interruption in that phase, so say <coughs> that um, Mary or John or whatever, is doing their toilet training, say for instance, and mm. I'm standing over them and I'm saying, Oh, it's okay, John, I'll wait till you're done, you know. And he's there for half an hour. I said, No, it's okay, fine, John, I'll wait for you, you know. And there's too much pressure on him, like, and basically he's going to the toilet for me, not for himself. Okay. And, or the opposite, that I'm over on Facebook or whatever, and John says, Oh, daddy, I did my toilet, you know, whatever. And I said, yeah, just busy at the moment, John, now. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. he, and, and he's very proud of something and he feels shamed then that he's kind of dismissed and stuff. Okay. So it could be either way. And then that, that, that forms this masochistic character where you again know people that, that carry the energy up in the chest. Donald Trump would be kind of a typical of that character. You know, it's kind of like, it's, it's not too sophisticated. It's kind of like, you know, either I like you or I don't, you know. Yeah. And, and, and if I don't want it's just boom, you know. Or, you know, you kind of, you'd see other characters they end up in court a lot with, with people and stuff. And okay. you probably know a few business people that have this. Yeah. It's very you much, brace yourself. Very much yeah, yeah, stuff, yeah. you know, and and <coughs> it's very defended because mm. it comes from that the, the the break in their autonomy stage. They didn't, weren't allowed to be autonomous, but okay. by fuck, they want to be autonomous now. Right, and and just get out yeah. of my fucking way if 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 you won't allow me to be that, you know. Yeah. Um. Then, uh, but again, they're quite, you know, they, they would have some positive characteristics in as well. So, you know, but each each one would have a, quite a. Uh, detail yeah. Yeah. yeah and then um a then the next character then is where they're not allowed to, so a bit later than they then that phase in is where they're not allowed to play so um maybe they're the eldest in the house and feel a bit of responsibility for the younger kids that have come along or um maybe there's a parent an alcoholic or there's fighting in the house or maybe not enough food in the house or whatever just but some kind of interruption anyway and and they're kind of making sure Jesus is, is the little fella, all right? Or <clears throat> and and there's no place to be frivolous and and act the maggot and and be yeah. the be the Egypt, like you know. And so so they uh, they're called the psychopathic character. So they they kind of would have kind of thin eyes like this, and and kind of you they'd be very helpful to everybody else, quite political. Mm -hmm. Um, but you would never see who they are inside themselves. That you'd never get a sense of um. They're like inside these these, these walls. Well, I know. I, I'm obviously I'm putting people yeah, that I know. Yeah, yeah. And so they're inside the walls of this thick walls of a castle. Yeah. And they're looking out through the slatted windows, and the lights are off inside, so they see everything, and they'll try and help out. To be very helpful to people. Yeah. But but you won't see what's yeah. going on inside the castle. So you never got to be the child. Really. Never never got to play. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last one then is around where the child is becoming aware of its gender. Okay. So, like my nephew said to me there a while back, you know, Declan, Declan, Dec, 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 what do boys have that girls don't, you know? And they're all kind of giddy around, you know, yeah. they're, kind of, they're aware of, of penises and vaginas and stuff. And, <laughs> we and never lose that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so, so in that in that phase, then, 
is called the rigid phase. And it's, it's rigid with pride as in rigid with... But I know you mentioned the word rigid earlier. In yeah, did, yeah, Something else. Yeah. But... but um, it's and so so Marilyn Monroe would be a typical rigid figure, um. So that that shape, so it's 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 it, there's a, a big heart and a big kind of loving kind of space, yeah. And there's a, a big like a very a very kind of strong energy around the hips and the sexual space. Okay. And but but it's constricted in the middle, so it's not very well connected. Now again, you know, as people get aware of this, they they manage to soften out these things you know yeah but but um so so they but it'd be somebody that would walk into a room and would carry a sexual energy okay uh without trying yeah you know they just you see them in a bar or whatever they just they attract that mm. for better or worse but they just attract it right and and um but there might be someone that might collect a jar of hearts because they their their sexual mightn't be connected to their heart and so they'd be giving out mixed messages because they're not connected in the middle yeah and again, you'd probably know. Characters and like and how does that come about? Sorry, I didn't, I, I, that, that there's some interruption. Say, oh, so, yes. Yeah, so say that at that phase of of being aware of 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 your gender, that um, maybe it could be that the parent wanted a girl or a boy, and you're the opposite, or it could be that um, that I was playing with my penis or something, and my mom comes in and she says, "Declan, Declan, Declan." You know, take your hands but outside. That dirty there, thing you know. away, yeah, dirty art. Yeah, yeah, put your hands over the over the blankets or something like that. Yeah. And, and I guess, oh, you know, and, or or some probably somebody else's insecurities around it, you know, or something. But in any event, I don't get a comfortness with it, hmm. and and uh, so I'm I feel a shame around it or something. So, so part of me is disconnected to it, but part of me is all because it's it's I'm not supposed to be doing it. I'm kind of it, it's interesting, and but it gets too much attention. Okay. And and so I I I'm. I'm connected to it in in a lot of ways, but I'm disconnected to it. I have I, have, I haven't got to do a good full body connect to it. Yeah. And this this constrict so it, it like a that figure and also then they would tend to be quite successful because they've got through the other phases and they're quite um, likable and they're not jealous of other people or anything. They're not kind of mm. they, they wouldn't be worried about someone else doing better than them or something like that. And so they. Um, uh, Quite, quite, quite good to be around, but, 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 but they could break someone's heart very quickly or something like that, you okay. know, giving out someone, you know, and then, then they're not going to follow through with something with them. Right. But anyway, so that's just, but they, it's interesting. That's the armoury. That's the, the body armoury that you were talking about, that yeah. Gary is talking about, yeah. 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 And we carry that with us physically. So when you're walking down the streets, when you get to know this a bit better, you can really see, oh yeah, and it makes, it makes life very easy, you know. So like, I have a brother that's one character and I used to be always wants him to be something else but he, he's just he's that character and I just accept him now as that I just know that's who he is so okay why would I want him to be somebody that he's not yeah it really does as much as um, I was going to sorry the first thing I was going to say was say you're doing a job or you're doing say for example this here like mm. I whether the camera was on or wasn't on we would be just chatting like we were downstairs yeah exactly yeah, yeah. And I think in that sense of being totally yourself, or as, you know, or there's no trying to be, there's no physical, the armory is not, doesn't need to be as strong in that it doesn't require much energy. Mm. And there's, there's great joy in that. And it comes down to whether it's in the job that you're doing or people you're best friends mm. with or your people that you want to spend the most time with you're most yourself with. And energetically, it's not tiresome. So if you're in a stressful job, the big part of the stress is probably, or I don't know, but mm. it is that you're not really being yourself about the situation. You're not being seen, because there isn't much stress when you are. I mean, there's physical stress that come and go and there's life that yeah, comes and yeah, go. Yeah. But to or whatever. if that army is not required, then it, life does flow yes. a, a lot better. Yeah. And it comes down to, I suppose, jobs or... I'm saying jobs a few times in there. But relationships... Wherever, yes. But relationships equally. You spend time with the people that you, you don't need that armoury. Yeah. And not just a kind of the, your other half kind of relationship, but brothers and sisters and mother and father, whoever, you know. There's a kind of a sense of... And, and, and you need to go back, you know, it's, it's interesting to go back to the to the wiser, older people that were around, you know, the, the, like the, yeah. Shakespeare. Yeah. Like the, the only thing he ever underlined in all his work was this above all in Hamlet to thy own self be true 
Yeah. And so if you're if you're true to yourself, if we're being true to ourselves now, there's mm-hmm. a kind of an ease, you know, I'm not trying to be somebody, I'm not trying to make a cool video. It's little bit of me trying to make a cool video. <laughs> but, but, but even being aware of that, you know, to, to yeah. lighten up with that, I'm aware that it's, it's as much as different as possible. Downstairs. As much as is possible yeah. with this being here, yes. I think it's a, it is still a slight. It is an intrusion. Yes, I mean, so it probably would be better if we had the camera on downstairs and we didn't notice on. Yeah, and I and then I suppose in a way, I've, a lot of times I kind of just um, uh, uh, I turn it on. I don't say a, a word about it, and I say I wait for a few minutes yeah. and then I go look. It's on there because the idea of on and off is. If there's an on required, yeah, 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 then you're trying to do something. Yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So we should be, if we could be unaware whether the battery was gone and the thing or the plug was gone or whatever. Yeah, because right, I have to yeah. keep it half idea. Yeah. It cuts out in thirty minutes. <laughs> oh, right. So there's a little bit of it still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but that's it's still. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but that piece around, I think that's, that's the point that you're mentioning about at work or in play or wherever. Um, if if we can be true to ourselves, and yeah. most of the time we're not, and and this brings us the whole area of psychotherapy, like really that that if if we're not being true to ourselves, if we're not in alignment, kind yeah. of I don't know if that's the right word, but <clears throat> that something has to give them, mm-hmm. or something has to support that misalignment, and it might be drugs, it might be work, it might be money, it might be sex, it might be mm-hmm. uh, our stress comes in or or um, ill health, all sorts of ill health, uh, and a lot of the healths now are connected to various different psychosomatics. You know, the, the, that's not that new to be talking about psychosomatics. You know, you can go back to to um, to the old Latin phrase "men sans incorpore sano." You know, sound in mind, sound in body. Mm. You know, the, 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 it's, it's not, you know, we're thinking it's a bit new now to be connecting the mind to the body, but you're like. It's thousands of years old, that expression, you know. Yeah, it was very, like, I had Eve on. It's funny, the different conversations, and Eve was talking about um, therapy. And I then, for the first time, kind of, I hadn't really told many people that I'd been to therapy. And I, when I realised I was saying it, she was saying to me, what do you think of it? And then I was saying it. Then she put the questions back on me. I wasn't comfortable. Yeah. But, um, but she talked about this idea that she went to see her doctor told her the doctor she was feeling down and he was wanted to write a prescription for her mm. straight away and um, it was just when you're talking about mind and body I mean to me, what we talked about then was in a way it should be the last thing on the list is medicine to put a veil mm. on life that you but it's just another prop well it's another is that what it is a prop it wasn't just you know it's kind of like it might get me through if I'm in a crisis or something but it's yeah. like we were talking about about ayahuasca and and, and psychedelics, you know. Yeah. But but for me, and I and I'm, I can't, I can't, I'm very open to all of that, everything as you yeah. know from our conversation earlier. But but like I I have done shamanic dance, say for instance, yeah, you know, where you dance for hours, like six hours without leaving the floor. No, I stop it. <laughs> the music doesn't stop. You're as bad as me for doing those sorts of things. Yeah. but <laughs> but um. But but in 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 that shamanic dance, you know, um, like I danced with you know uh, with my grandparents mm. on both maternal and and patriarchal kind of sides, you know, and 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 the you danced. What do you mean you danced? Danced with my with my ancestors in your mind. Yeah, well, they, were, they were there. Okay, that's as if it, as if it was on ayahuasca, but I wasn't. Yeah, so. Uh, some water just to keep me going. So the was, music obviously kicked in. Did it? Well, it was it was it was it was facilitated by a shamanic dance practitioner, you know. Okay. And um, a su- super facilitator, really. Um, Yakov, Yakov, darling, he's just a fantastic guy. Like you know, I think he's from Switzerland. But um, like, so so just like maybe a hundred of us in the room or something like that. So he asked us to dance in 50 pairs. And as it happens, I ended up dancing with the bloke. Because the bloke was the bloke next to me. And we just looked at him and said, OK, we'll dance together for, for this bit. Right. And and uh, so for a while, for, for an hour or two, you're dancing on your own. There's other stuff going on. And he leads you right up to this point, you know. But then, anyway, so one guy is witnessing. The, 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 and again, in shamanic work, there's a lot of witnessing. And, and again, the... the Again, our elders, you know, knew that this was a very important to be witnessed, and you can mm. see, as a, you know, if you have your young two-year-old at the swimming pool, 
They want daddy to look before they jump in off the side of the swimming pool. They want to be witnessed. Yeah, you know? seen, yeah. Yes, I see you, like an avatar. I see yeah. you. And, and, um, but, so, so this guy was witnessing me, so I could dance with my eyes closed off, so, you know, I was kind of protected. So mm. I couldn't, I didn't need to focus on anything else. I just knew he was going to mind me. Yeah. And, and, uh, so I'm, it's just kind of trancy music, you know, so you kind of know the beat that's coming, it's not going to surprise you or something like that. So you can really let it go into the trance of it. Mm. And then, he just said then, you know, after like a long time in that trance space, maybe a half an hour, you know, full dancing in the same trance space, you know, all the time moving to the same trance. He said, no, just, just imagine that your mother and father are behind you, you know. Mm. So pretty easy. I was able to imagine both of them were there. They were both alive at the time. And then he said, then I just, so then you're dancing, then I'm dancing maybe another 20 minutes aware of my mum and dad behind me, you know. And then he said, now I want you to turn around and just dance with your father. Sorry, with your mother first. It was so, 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 so. I ended up then so turning around, just, 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 just turn around. Still have my eyes closed all the time. All, mm. the, all this time, my eyes closed. And then sometimes with my mum, you know, she's not a great dancer, but I was dancing away with her anyway. And and um, <laughs> it's an interesting observation. Yeah, it was, but it was the first thing that came into my yeah, mind, you know. Yeah. And then, then, because it's very real. She's, she might as well be there. Okay. You know? And yeah. I don't know that she's not there. I don't, I don't know that. You know. Right. She's there from all. From Visually from, speaking. Yeah, from well, I managed to, but I see her. Yeah. Okay. And and she's as there as is probably more there than she was when we were at home watching telly together. Yeah. You know, um, and and uh, so then, I danced with her for a good while. Then he says, "Can you just imagine now behind her are her parents?" It was mm -hmm. very easy. It was my grandmother, my granddad are there, and then, and then he says, "Just, just," and then imagine their grandparents behind them. So then this V happened. Then so there's all these people behind me, uh, or in front of me. As I said, I turned around, and and um, she's next thing. I I I just realised like these were in the famine. Mm. I wasn't gone back too far along the line, like, and I just thought, geez, did they eat somebody? Like, did they? Would they have? Was there was there cannibalism? Was there? How did they survive this? Like. And, you know, from the west of Ireland, from a really that's, poor That's area, from the depths of your thinking not there. Not near the it? sea, like, or anything, you know. Yeah. And, and... Uh, She's definitely thinking about cannibalism there, the other yeah. day. Yeah. Genuine. So I, I ended up then going on my... F I couldn't stand up. Yeah. I, so down on, my, on the ground, just on, on my knees, and bawl crying. And it was the first time ever, I mean, I read the history of the famine and everything, but it was the first time ever that I realised, like, I'm from the famine. And, and and it was really sad. I was bro even now, but you know, you kind of I could let myself go into that space now, you know. But it was like really fucking sad, like just 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 heartbreakingly, and not being able to stand on my two feet, you know. That's bringing you right down into the depth of your genetic mm. makeup. Yeah. And did you feel there was something in that? That you saw something there that. Do you think there was? Do you think it's true, or do you think it's ima your well, imagination? Well, it is true. Like that's that's true. That that's where I come from. Yeah. And I didn't plan this. Yeah. At all, and it isn't a thought, and it isn't a feeling. It was just, uh, I just embodied like my body. For whatever was going on, however we understand that, went to the floor, and and tears were the expression of it, on on coming out down just all and down. And I couldn't, I just couldn't, just literally couldn't stand up. Mm. And my breath was very irregular, you know, it was, like it was just overwhelming. Yeah. And I think it does take us maybe a few generations to really, to, to appreciate that, you know. So you think it's carried in the, in the body, the, this? Um, ah, sure, it has to be, yeah. Well, uh, so, um, during my ayahuasca experience, which was in a country where it's legal. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> no, just saying for the, uh, for the police that be watching. Like, uh, like, you didn't hear Christy Moore's song about Amsterdam? No. And you put it, we won't put it on before you go, just with the pack. Um, but it was the, uh, this, uh, this old raw voice in my head, this, oh, you, know, you need to be doing this, no, 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 get up, and they're not doing this, no, no. And when I was doing it, I could, it was like as I was having a kind of a board meeting with every member of my makeup. And one of them in, was in there as a relation. I better not mention which one. But one was a relation yeah. that was in the family. And it was absolutely crystal clear in that moment that that voice in my head was that person. Mm. And then the board meeting was, hands up who wants to keep that voice 
<laughs> really? Really. Does anybody want to keep that voice? We need to hear that voice as much as we've heard it in the past. And it was good. No. <laughs> Straight away. Straight away. Yeah. Love the Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fine. We don't need to hear from you anymore. Yeah, You're not yeah. adding any value whatsoever to this. <laughs> yeah. But it's, um, but it's mad, isn't it? And yeah. I suppose what, I'm, what I'm kind of suggesting there, Frank, is that some... That for me, I think I get to some of those spaces without the ayahuasca. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, say in that shamanic dance, you know, yeah. or like, and then just maybe just quickly, briefly, just to, to, the next day was I danced with my dad. Yeah. So I was kind of, I was a bit kind of, geez, uh, do I want to go back into the family again, you know? Yeah. In my head, but, but you just let go, whatever happens. But it was, it was not at all. That Dad. when when like when they went back in their V's, like it was what a fucking party, mm. and 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 we were laughing and drinking and and having mighty crack all together, and then then you know the facilitator said like can you, can you just imagine that all the ancestors in the room now so the room was like there was thousands of people in the room at this stage in my head you know yeah can you imagine all the all the all the ancestors dancing with each other now in the room that, that are all here. Yeah, oh, it was fantastic. But do you think that brings a little bit of, um, say, this eternal struggle, or whatever? That in that moment it was a, a celebration of you all. It sounds mm. like a cel- you all got together in that moment, all of my dad's side, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I wasn't that on my mum's side that time. Right. Okay. No. And there was great crack on that Mighty side. Mighty crack. Yeah. Yeah. Which was kind of a bit typical of my mum and dad. You know. Yeah. My mum would have made sure that there was dinner on the table and my dad would make sure there was crack in the house. <laughs> Do you know? Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, but anyway, but the point really I suppose of just bringing that into it is that I did all that. If I can do that, you know, without the chemicals or the, and not chemicals isn't the right word, but, but plant medicine, I yeah. suppose maybe is the right word for it or something. Mm. Um, would you, um, I, uh, introduce yourself say when you meet somebody do you introduce yourself as a psychotherapist or do you, you know you'd say, say what do you do for a living and do, do you go or what, what way does it do you have an elevator you know when somebody asks you so what do you do uh, Declan who are you yeah I hate what, that what, question what are you I hate that question yeah. I, I instantly just go I don't I, yeah. I'm not sure at the moment is that okay <laughs> as an answer yeah I, I'd be a bit nervous because the, the difficulty of you, you know, I remember going on the train to to, to Galway yeah. uh, and when I wasn't long as a psychotherapist, you know, yeah. and so somebody was asking me what I was doing, I was after qualified, so I was delighted to be telling them I was a psychotherapist, too. Yeah. and sure, Jesus, so I had a therapy session the whole way down. First of all, they just sit back, you know, like, oh, you're, oh, you're yeah. probably reading me now, are you? And I said, no, and, um, but then... But there probably is a bit of that too, though, is there, at the early stages, I know two people who were in... Uh, early, and they can't resist air. Now, one of them is a little bit more qualified, but they can't resist going. Now, why exactly do you feel that way, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> and I go, ah, now you can just nip that in the bud there, and they love yeah, it now. Yeah, yeah. So, but but anyway, so I ended up, you know, having a whole three-hour therapy session on the train. You know, okay. And, and, like I just thought, Jesus. So so nowadays, you know, if you were, you know, you were asking me, you know, and you're thinking, oh, are you analysing me now, there? Yeah. You know, I'd say, I will if you pay me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm absolutely not a dog. No, no. You know, it's yeah, my work. Do, it's, yeah. it's my job. Yeah. So, no, I wish I was having the crack. Now, you know, the kind of conversation we're having is therapeutic. Yeah. And the coffee earlier is therapeutic, you know, mm. because we're talking about, about mixing and gathering and stuff, but it's present. Yeah. We're both present to the conversation and we're not talking about, you know, we're not trying to play games and, you know, how cool am I looking or is there some something in this for me? Or, yeah. You know, what are you getting out of this? Or, yeah, you know, all that shit that goes on, you know. So it's just, it's just, it's just two people meeting mm. with no agenda, and probably a curiosity for life. Yeah, probably a love between us at some yeah. level or other, not an erotic one, but <laughs> but, 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 a, but a, a love nonetheless, you know. Yeah, I agree with and, that. Yeah, and uh, and that we can actually name that even, you know. Yeah. It's nice. I, I probably wouldn't volunteer as quickly as you, yeah, but I like but, the job. But, yeah. but I think it's true, like and 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 uh, and probably a trust. Yeah. I know that you're not trying to get something out of this for yourself or to mm. me or something or kind of trying to negotiate a free a free therapy session or, or, or <laughs> yeah yeah you know, or vice versa for me trying to get some something out of this you know but isn't that a huge thing in a way in life that I mean we say there's agendas going I was only talking about this but 
you see in business or in the world of day to day living, there's agendas going on all the time to big degrees you know agendas I need to work hard to get make a living I need to do this and you need to perform for me or I need to perform for you but in the scenario and again it comes back to truth I suppose this idea where there is no agenda there's there is freedom that reminds me of the the, the story of the little fella in the forest go on and and, and uh, he's not lost like, he's just running around the forest you know and and uh, but he meets this old man and uh, sitting down on a old branch of a tree, and um, he says, "Oh, he says, hello, old man, hello." And he says, "Tell me, old man, what's the nicest sound in the forest?" And the old man is thinking and scratching his beard, and the little fellow says, "Oh, I bet you I know what it is. I bet you it's the sound of the rain when the rain is coming down through the leaves and the trees." And, yeah. and uh, the old man says, mm, "I don't think so, no." And if, is it is it the is it the wind when the wind is whistling through the leaves, and and uh, no, I think so. Is it the birds when the birds are all singing in the morning, and that's just the birds, and the old man says no, I don't think so. T- tell me, old man, what's the nicest sound in the forest? And the old man says it's the sound of what happens. Mm. And and it's just something. Can we be with that? You know. It's beautiful, that sound of what happens, isn't it? Mm. You said that in your email to me, mm. that I'm looking forward to the sound of what happens. Mm. But there, that's the... Uh, there is that bit of scariness, the unknown, mm. we'll say, of... Um, the excitement and the fear of the unknown. The, the, yeah, how, how, is that, how is it going to work? Mm. And um, But then there's that ease as well, sure, it's going to work the way it's going to work, one way or the other, mm. you know. Well, what are we afraid of in that, you know, if it doesn't work? Will we look like idiots or what? Or will we get humiliated? Or does it bring up some old judgments or something? What is it that we're afraid of, you know? Well, I personally think the biggest fear is the um, is being seen. Uh, can I be seen as I am? And if, if and the more you can be seen as you are, the more comfortable you get with that, the more. What are you there afraid is. of in the being seen as you are? What, is, what would you be afraid of in that? Oh, will they see? You know, the vulnerability, weakness. Um, and would they not like? Would they judge that? Would they judge that as being a bit? Because they'll see vulnerability and leave to see who I am. They'll see plenty of vulnerability. Yeah, but I embrace that. You know, I'd be glad for them to see it. But I, I am very vulnerable. Like right now, I'm vulnerable even talking about that. You know, mm. and but but. But but I'm not anyway ashamed of that or I want him to hide that. Yeah, well I think that's magnificent. Yeah. I do think that's yeah, magnificent yeah. because um uh, But that's it like, isn't it really? Mm-hmm. That's what you're kind of that's what you'd be looking for in a way, not not trying to be anything. And there is the absolute freedom in a way. I wonder the shame mm-hmm. what we're afraid of then. What? I wonder is it shame? That if we're seen, we'd be ashamed of what's seen. Yeah, but there's no co- there's no covering up. Yeah, you know the word shame. It comes from I think it comes from kind of high an old high German word called scamma or something, which is to hide. To hide. I thought it was the word to hide. Yeah, yeah. and and there's something about, you know, if if the, the the cure for 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 shame is to be seen. Yeah. If we let it be seen, it's like this idea of taking it out of the dark, isn't it? Putting, mm. bringing a bit of light into it. Which is why I call it solace counselling. Yeah. Okay. Bring the light to it. Yeah. Nice yeah. segue. Yeah. <laughs> solace counselling dot com. <laughs> Just a little plug there. <laughs> Um, but, but but seriously, that's the that's the reason that I got that. I just love bringing things into the light, you know. But do you think then, in a way, uh, see, another thing I thought of at the weekend was this men's international day thing, and then there was this. It showed this guy on the street on Friday. I don't even know if I want to go down this route, but we go anyway. The, it showed this guy went out half naked, lying on the street in Dublin somewhere. And it was part of this campaign to bring awareness to Men's International Day. And basically, he's half naked. He's totally exposed. 
And so then, <coughs> the Sunday was Men's International Day about bringing awareness to men's mental health, blah, blah, blah. But if you take the idea of the therapy and what you do for a living, in a way, the freedom is, let's say, for people or anybody who is me or whoever is going through something in their life in the space that you try to, this is what you aspire to offer. You offer a space where that vulnerability can be seen mm. and allow a safe place to to be. You just be like. Mm. And I think, um, isn't that, that is what mm. you, that is, and, and in that somebody can be heard and seen for who they are. But obviously as well, uh, people don't come in straight away and... I'd have to build an alliance, uh, like a yeah. trust, you know, they have to know that I mean what I say and... Mm. Just because you're a therapist doesn't give you any right to have the, the access to the inner most vulnerable spaces of people's hearts and minds, you know, mm. does not not even close, you know, you have to earn that, I think, as a therapist, you know, and and uh, and, and I always wonder, you know, am I worthy of it? You know, there's, mm. there's, a, there's a humility that, that, that I think is there anyway and probably needs to be there, you know, that like Jesus just you know, don't be don't be expecting people to cough up some stuff just because you're a blooming therapist. Like, who the fuck do you think you are? Yeah. Do you know, like, uh, and so it's really a, it's a it's a very gentle space, really, of just about just uh, allowing yourself to be with them. And I, I I need to not do things, you know, not to get doing things. You know? mm. Can I can I be? That's that's hard though too. Is that you know the, the fixer <coughs> nature that. Um, Oh, it is, especially when they tell you, I'm paying you, Declan, to know, so I want your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> You're the expert, Declan. So yeah, come on, so what's tell just me, give me the answer should, right should now. I, should I leave her or should I stay with her? <laughs> should I stay or should I go? And you, obviously, you don't ever give the answer, do you? Well, well, right. uh, the answer to that question, I suppose, something that was, you know, if the, if the Should I stay with you then? Well, well, yeah, say for instance, yeah. I would say, like, first of all, Frank, like, why are you giving me so much power? Yeah. Why, why are you giving me the authority over that? Oh, so do you see great. what you're doing here now? It's a great question you know? to ask, yeah. So, so you're saying to me that I would know better than you. Why would I know better than you? Mm. Let's, let's play. Well, you're paying. You're, you're study this thing, you know. You're, <laughs> and I'm paying you, like, so, so fucking tell me, you know. Yeah. But you must have an opinion. And, and um, I, just, just, just calm down. Yeah. You know, like we need to look, but I get that you're excited about this. So, so what is it that, that has you really, you know, kind of, um, so I might, I might even at that point say, look, let's swap chairs. Mm. So, so let's say I'm married to Nula, to Nula and I'm asking you, what would you think I should do? Yeah. And you might give me some advice and that would be very helpful then. And normally in that is the, is the wisdom really? Ah, yeah, they, so, they, they, yeah, so they're accessing their own yeah. answer. I the answer that they want to give. It's not I'm being clever or being, yeah. being, you know, like a circuit therapy trick. I haven't a fucking clue whether you should leave Nola or not. Yeah. How would I know? <laughs> you know she won't watch this anyway. Or, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't mind Nola. <laughs> He's saying leave, babes. So I <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, that's a projection now Nola you know that <laughs> could be any woman that I'm with <laughs> she's cool about that now yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but in a way then what you're kind of doing is clearing away the um, you're clearing away the shoulds and the shut and oh. the how and the why and the where of it and allowing people find the answer within even mm. though they don't think that's possible there's no way they know initially they don't and so that's you're caught in your own loops though isn't mm, it mm. Mm. or do you I, I, I think it might be different for different people mm, so, okay. so I, I, I kind of just I know that I know nothing that's about the only thing that I'm sure about mm. and even with every client I know that I know nothing and, I, and I, even now talking to you, like, really, I have nothing to offer. Mm. Do you know, I really don't know yeah. anything in that Socratic kind of a way like this. That, that, and, and with that, if, if, we, if we have that, we're open to some learning. Yeah. I, I don't want to convince anyone listening to this or convince you mm. of anything. Yeah. No interest. Why? Like, what would they do to convince you of anything? Yeah. But just, I'm interested in what I might learn myself as a selfish thing, really, in, in, in shooting the breeze about some mm. topic about you know, the meaning of life or, or anything, you know, what might I learn from? But if I think I know it, sure, I've shut off the, the learning, haven't I? 
to me anyway you have if you're going in with this body of knowledge that you're trying <coughs> to uh, you were bringing your big tool bag into the room and going right yeah. well, what part do you want me to fix that yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not a mechanic it's all right for the plumber or the electrician or the mechanic isn't yeah it? So, since I used to be an engineer one time but anyway yeah. well the fixing thing yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's um, <coughs> that's very interesting mm. yeah and and as as a supervisor of other therapists now, it's interesting to watch young novice therapists, you know, and they they're very busy doing, mm. and they're frightened that they wouldn't have you know they won't have enough answers enough to to you know for someone coming in. Yeah, and, and you know it's hard enough I think for them to have the courage just to sit down and be with them, to be with the client coming in. And I can I can totally understand because you've learned so much. <coughs> And so you're going in and in a way you need to let go, or do you? You need to let go yes. of everything you know and then trust what you've learned and go with that. Is that it? I think mostly you have to love the person sitting in front of you. Really love them. You know, just really love them. But, uh, and not to judge them in that, you know. So really... The, the, the term Carl Rogers would use is unconditional positive regard, which is kind of like a euphemism for love, but but it takes out the because love has a kind of a you know when you say I love I love you you know it's kind of like it gives you some right to to want them to be a certain way or something. Say it back. Like no, it's I don't know what it does, but it but it's, it it can be a bit cumbersome the words you know because yeah. people have a lot of stuff attached to it you know, but <clears throat> but that you have this, but for me that's what it is. It's just I used. Really love them unconditionally, so that you know, say a client. Sorry, I might get you just to straighten oh, yeah. up there. Just to so say, a bit late anyway. So, um, my so, back up. So, um, go on. Sorry, I love you as long as you have your thing proper on your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Far from that condition, Far from you're, that fine. you're all right. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's kind of a thing that, that you know, even where I say a client came in, you know, under the influence of alcohol, you know, yeah, and and my guess was afterwards like that. She was um, testing me to see would I still be as nice to her and accept her, mm. you know, when she came in at the middle of the day with alcohol taken, you know, and and you know it was fine. I just all, all I was was in a curious place, wondering what what really is this? What is this person saying to me coming in this way? What does that mean? Can I mm. decipher this? And and then, you know. Just be with that, you know, mm. but not to judge it, like just to be more curious. The idea of loving somebody, though, I find that very hard <coughs> to, to love like that unconditionally. Um, I mean, does that not, how does that not take time, that? Or do you... Do well, it, yeah, that's a fair point. I, I, I remember, I, was, I don't do much work with kids, but it was, but a school rang me up and they had a particular child that they asked me would I go up and help out because... Actually, all the teachers had refused to teach the child, you know. Mm. So um, I says I would, but it sounds like a bit of a tricky task, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember talking to um, a mother and a psychotherapist before I went up, you know, and she said, Declan, the only bit of advice I give you is just decide that you're going when you're going up that you're going to like him. Okay. Regardless of what he does, that you're not going to let him. Not like yet. You won't give him. You won't mm-hmm. let him. You won't let him away with that. You know. And by jizz, he was challenged. Like he had tried to set fire to the school, and he had done all sorts of stuff. You know, and <laughs> and <clears throat> it took me a while. Yeah. And like he couldn't be very close. You know, he was up hurling most of the time, and so much he was a hurley and all that sort of stuff. You know, uh. and plenty of space between us. You know. Yeah. And eventually, we were able to play pool together, and eventually work on a computer and put together a few rap songs and make a CD or something. You know. Yeah. And and. Um, but but it was but that piece about you know I had the desire to like him, yeah. And and uh, despite his best efforts at the beginning, he wasn't going to win that battle, you know. And I think when there's a, a when when you're very open and even deliberately, you know, and if I can't, you know, if there's some somebody comes in that that sparks something in me, uh, and that I can't like them, I think I, I need to refer them on to somebody else. Okay. I well. think I'm not going to be any use to them. Mm. I suppose in a way what it is is is, uh, is 
that law of ideas is, is, is a friend in the... See, you can't talk to your wife or you can't because you just don't want to put all your whatever on mm. them and you feel it's not fair. You can't talk to X, Y or Z. Uh, in that, it, it off, it's a place... When you talk like that, it's a place, it's a safe place that, mm. wow, I'm actually not going to be judged here. And That's you, amazing. And that isn't a skill. You kind of know when you're sitting there, after a while you know... This is, this is for fucking real. Like, Tetlin isn't actually judging me. And I'm after yeah. telling them like, that I'm after being with six prostitutes in the last week and I'm married and I have two children at home. Mm. Do you know that someone can say that to you and still, like, all I am at that point is wondering, what the fuck is that about? Yeah. Why is he doing this? And I'm really curious, like, really nosy, investigative, wanting to understand what human condition would bring you to this space. Yeah. You know, and probably could judge it as a self-harm but, but why is he self-harming is all I'm wanting to know mm. and what's the, what's underneath that and, and, and the worse that would get the more I realise I need to work a bit harder because I'm not getting to it and, and and I would really hate to for a problem to be a bit of ego on this now at this point you know if it got worse like I'd be thinking Jesus this is your this, is, this isn't your average 5'8 now Declan you know you need to Pull up your socks here, like you to really think this through. What what's going on for this person? You know. Mm. But the judgment would be, why, why would they judge someone like that? Yeah. Again, I think that's lovely, though. Mm. I mean, I think that's mm. what the power is yeah. in it because you have this self judge anyway, mm. and it's a break from that almost. Mm. The one exception to that, and it's probably mm. not the judgment, but it's but it's 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 the legal moral right. So if this kid's in trouble, yeah. You know, so if, if someone physically or mentally or sexually or whatever abusing kids, that's not okay. Yeah. And even though I'll be interested to know why they're doing that and, and would want to be able to, if I could, get into to fixing that somehow or to, or to throw in some light on that maybe. Um, but, but at that point I have to report that. Yeah. And that would generally finish the therapy. Yeah. So and, and that's not that's, that's the that's unpleasant. Yeah, that, that, but I mean that, that's, that's, that's the that reality. Come up it's, for it's, me, it's just lucky enough it hasn't come up for me. But okay. but but if it did, uh, you know, that's what I have to do. I have to make. You're not a confessional box, in that sense. In, in know, that, in, 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 well, it, in in like I don't mind people telling me you know they're doing drugs and that's illegal, you know. But I don't mind. I, I walk. With that, that's very regular, you know. Yeah. It's like just only yesterday from the. Lab. It's harming somebody. And stuff, but, okay. um, but, you know, he got off with a suspended sentence. But, you know, I'm glad to help out someone like that. You know, and I worked in the prisons, you know, as a, every Tuesday evening I used to go in to Mount Joy, you know, for two hours. Mm. And again, it was very easy like them. Mm. But, you know, really easy, like, you know, and those are kind of all tattooed up and all this stuff. You know. I missed that one. Just, just stop just there now or... It's, I don't know how long it's stopped, yeah, but it can't so, have been yeah. too long. But that was, but again, you know, again, I, and 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 from a personal point of view, I didn't realise why I was going into Mount Joy, you know, mm. and I hated it, but I never missed it. It was never late. Yeah. And I was getting not no, it was you know a good few years ago. Now. There was nothing out for me anyway, in any shape or form, you know, like work wise or anything, or, or but but I, and I thought, oh, I don't, and, I, and you don't like to, oh, why are you doing it, Declan? You know, and I went to my own therapist about it, and um, it brought back to boarding school. And I was in boarding school, and so I was healing the the child part of myself, the teenager in myself that was in boarding school, mm. and and I realised that they were giving me the chance, the prisoners were giving me the chance to to heal that wound inside of myself, mm. which was great. Then because the next day I went back in, I was very aware of that I'm getting more out of this than I'm giving, so any kind of you know kind of space of, am I great? Uh, was gone out the window, <laughs> and 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 was like, are these people great to give me this chance? Yeah, I think it's very interesting to give so, me the chance. So yeah, I understood. and and they were really, you know, they didn't need to, you know, and, and, and I, it, it wasn't all a piece. Of, I remember the very first person I went up to say hello to, you know, so they fall out at half five and they fall in at half seven. Yeah. So I'd be there about twenty five past five in the circle, and then there's these wings coming off the circle. Mm -hmm. So down C wing was the first place I went, and there was a like kind of um snooker table or whatever pool table or halfway between and and um then I just looked this fellow and I just said hello to him you know and uh told him like who I was and what I was just doing for his chat with people and stuff and I was basically there trying to reduce the suicide rate there was a few few of us part of that 
But uh, and I just said, you know, how are you doing? He said, how the fuck do you think I'm doing? I'm locked up, I'm like... <laughs> so, you know, it wasn't all yeah. smelling sweet or something. And the only office I had was on the floor. So we, either I'd walk a few lengths of a wing with them and just, just chat as we walk on the wing mm. or sit on the floor and chat. Like, that was... as as mm. um, Which was a bit shit, like, that that the, that the prison couldn't give the space. space. Yeah. yeah for Not for me, but for them, for the prisoners. You know, I was fine on the floor. And like, mm. But... Um, yeah, I think it has improved a little bit in sense, but like, there was slapping out at that time as well. Like, there was no toilets in the prison. Like there was so in their cell, there was a chair cell with somebody, a stranger. Like and then there was a bucket and it just a lid on the bucket. And you're there from half seven in the mo- night time until half seven in the morning. And that door doesn't open. That's horrendous to go in. I'm saying for you to go in. I know it's horrendous for them, but it's oh, horrendous yeah. for you to go in and experience that too. Yeah. Just yeah. Hmm. Was a woman used to go in to show me the ropes the first day wow. into the men's prison. You know, I thought, Jesus, if she can do it, I can do it anyway. That's seriously impressive. <coughs> was just, yeah. I mm-hmm. wonder what was going on there that she decided to um, do that. Mm. That's, that requires bravery, yeah, yeah. I would have thought. Since that, since that, she was you know, the, the head person in the Samaritans in town. So she has a real kind of, she has a real kind of go to her, you know. She said, said she's the head of the Samaritans. Okay, the, she, she is yeah. it now, but she did a three-year stint right. as head of the Samaritans since, you know. Mm. Mm. Again, voluntary, unpaid job, you know. And it's great to see her doing that. Like, but she has that kind of leadership quality, you know. Yeah. And she'd be embarrassed if, if, if I mentioned her name even, you know. So. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Um... Uh, the, the questions come into my head um, from years ago we, we kind of sat and um, uh, and I remember saying to you something like um, do you know what this is hmm. yeah this <laughs> <laughs> I remember the moment you did it yeah. it really caught me as soon as you did that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and it's still this mm. It's still this. It's actually just whenever you yeah. did, it's the exact same. This doesn't change the quality of it. Yeah, yeah. But the um, trying to figure out the idea of trying to figure it out or whatever to me, it's it's not that it's long gone. It might come up, but the idea of trying to figure this out, you know, all your years and all that, mm. does it make any difference trying to figure out this? What we're did in, it, like, yeah. what, you know, even this. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, 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 your first thing when you, when you when we just did it there now with that yeah was it reminds me of a click of the camera when I'd be clicking trying to get the kingfisher yeah so it's something about the, the 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 absolute and the kingfisher is gone just like that so it's mm. very hard to catch this yeah it's that it's that elusive you um, know uh, somebody said you know I you almost have to step out of it to see it to see it to yeah. talk about it because yeah. it's in the happening yeah. it's impossible it's, it's, yeah. it, it doesn't stand still yeah it doesn't there's, there's a kind of a piece about it that that um, yeah I've been to a few satsangs probably since that chat and stuff like that and yeah. so that kind of brings out a little bit of that space you know um, Tony Parsons would be a guy that, that he hasn't been over for a while but no he's uh, apparently there's a bit of a falling out with or with him and the rest of the game. With his bit of a crew, and they kind of said to him, "Would you not?" Well, this is what I've heard. That would you not change what you're saying? You know. All right. And to, to to line up with the rest of them. Yeah, and to him that just didn't make any sense. So why would it? Yeah. 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 You know, I did a film on it. I didn't know. Um, you might send me a link. I would. Yeah, it's something. interesting. I didn't share it with anybody, and. Um, I literally hardly told anybody about oh, it. Nice. And now you're telling the whole world. Uh, the whole, yeah, the whole 50 people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if, um, uh, anyway, I had nobody on my YouTube channel. I put it up and didn't tell anybody about it. And it's something like 37,000 views, which is... Really? Yeah, I think it's... Oh, I'd love to see it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's interesting how these things can organically, mm. uh, when you, you mm. don't actually give a crap mm. about them. But... Um, so... It, <clears throat> it's not answering the question but another response that comes up to me is, so one is, is the kingfisher kind of that 
second just catching them and not catching them and yeah and then that second is or that instant that even time isn't a right phrase you know but the other thing that comes up is love i suppose just as mm -hmm. an answer to that and it's not really the answer to that question but but um but there's a there's a moment when i sit down maybe on a couch with my lover or something you know and 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 we just sink in. Maybe if I was away for the weekend in May or as I was, you know, and come back. Um, and we don't talk or anything. We don't have to. You can talk if you want. But we don't have to talk. And I'm not even aware of my breath. It's not. It's not a mindful thing. Yeah. It, it's almost the absence of mindfulness because mindfulness is still doing something. Still a bit of attention. Yeah. Yeah. So it's that kind of. And I think in that space. Uh, it's almost like when you can let go of awareness even. Mm. And that happens, it's, it's, yeah. And, and, and and then you're being. Mm. But you're not aware that you're... If you're aware you're being, you're, you're doing something, I think. You're doing the being. Yeah, am I doing a good job of being the being? Yes. Yeah. A, so, so... That's a bit of an exhale, isn't it, really? That's what you're describing in a way. It's the... close the eyes and lean in and but that I think is easier with someone that you can really love and just just there's, there's something about being human that's to be relational mm. and and I don't know if I understand this in a way that I can explain this but but in a felt sense they're talking about a felt sense in in, in um, uh, I suppose the whole thing of ecstasy and you know psychedelics and stuff to talk about a felt sense in that but there's also a felt sense in psychotherapy we kind of like the gut feel yeah or whatever or it's not even in the gut i don't know where it is but it's kind of like a felt sense of something it's, it's a mass it's not psychosomatic but it's, it's something else yeah. it's of energetically that. felt mm. yes maybe that's mm. the easiest way to describe it and sometimes when you Mm. Uh, so you, uh, I have cut across to you. Go on ahead, go on ahead. No, it was just when you said you mentioned there a second ago about mindfulness and this idea well, that's still a, almost attention, a, a doing. Um, it's you know it is mm. almost is it for me that I start I would still do meditating just to kind of clear my mind mm. or just things sometimes work themselves out I find but still somewhat of a doing and it's like mindfulness is huge now I see it coming up mm. all the time. And that's it is almost. I mean, it is again whatever gets you through. I'm not, um, mm. uh, but it is. It does feel like it. Uh, am, am I doing a good job I'm, being I'm, mindful? I'm going to sit down and, and do be ten mind. minutes mindfulness. Yeah, um, and and there's something about you know. Can we incorporate that maybe more? I I I, I like it, and I think it's really important. That, mm. You know, and certainly from anxiety. You know, talk about mindfulness being all over the place. Certainly, anxiety is is certainly been very vocalised at the moment. Mm. You know, don't know if it's more prevalent or being more talked about, but that <coughs> like the best tool we have for for anxiety is is connecting to your breath, mm. and and uh, and that's free. And so there's no one advertising it on the TV because no one is able to make any dash out of it. Yeah. But but really just noticing that you know and where you're breathing, not, not just noticing your breath, but but being deliberate about how you're breathing. Mm. Um, like it, it kind of struck me, you know, being in Trinity where they're training doctors and scientists and biologists and stuff. Yeah. And they don't know how to breathe. They literally don't know how to breathe. They don't know how to take a breath into their belly. Like they're, you know, they'd be breathing with their belly coming in. Yeah. On the in breath, they're going. When it afterwards take a big breath and then the belly comes out when they're doing the breath. <laughs> I'm checking myself there. Yes, yeah. but it's good to check yourself, yeah. Yeah. And and so that sense of of um or even say, you know, if I get a phone call from, from you, so it's like Frank on the phone, you know, I just go How's it going, Frank? Mm -hmm. You know, but that I that I, I take like a telephone meditation or something you could call it, but I take an Moment. in breath and, a, yeah. and an out breath. And then I say hello, but I give myself the breath first. I just respect myself a little bit first, mm. and then I'm very present to you then, because I might have been annoyed at something, or I might have been full of whatever it is, and just that's probably two seconds, but it feels like a long time, and I can is enough time to let go 
whatever I was doing yeah. and to be present to you. Do you know like before you come into Nula, say just in the car, before you just click zap the car closed, just go. Here we fucking go. <laughs> well, maybe. Maybe. No, no, if that's not the case at all. There's a big kids party on in the house or oh, something. Oh, stop, yeah. But the relations are over. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But take the breath. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, but, so something about relations and about, about being in relationship and about relating and about that being... In communion almost, though, as well. There's yeah, another word for communication is communion. Yeah, yeah, something of that in in being human in, that connects to this as well, I think. Something... Mm. It's not... It's not. It's a different thing because... We're not going to answer that now, I suppose. No, we're not, but, no. But, um, maybe awareness of that, of the magic of... of uh, and... Um, the elusiveness of that, you know, and maybe, maybe a bit of humility, and maybe you know, just it's like when you go and look still at known, the, like when yeah. you go out and look at the stars, and you just think, holy fuck. Well, I I think it's this feeling that you, whatever way, you I might think that I'm in, I, I'm going to figure things out, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. It really it is unknowable. There's no matter who you are, what you are, what place you've come from. What position you are, this. I may be accepting that. Yeah. Like Sean O'Casey's play, the first line in, in, in the play, What is the Stars? Mm. Do you know, like, what is the Stars? Yeah, what is this? But isn't it, isn't it kind of like. It's the same, yeah. What is the Stars? Yeah. The, the, the plow on the Stars, the first line in the plow on the Stars, I think. Mm. What is the Stars? Even the grammar is incorrect, kind of, and somehow, but yeah. it brings attention to to the question. Mm. What is the stars? And so what is it like? Yeah, that's that's. Uh, there's a name for that. Uh, those types of questions, those arresting oh, types like of questions. The sound of one hand clapping or something. Yeah, it is one of those that just the yeah. brain can't. It's like if somebody says to me, "But um, this is everything and nothing happening." And I kind of go, okay, I cannot fathom what the fuck you're talking about there. I just can't. This is everything and nothing. And, and this is everything appearing out of nothing. And it's nothing and everything at the same time. And I just go, okay, that sounds like a nice sentence. but A bit clever, but, but I can't make it. I can't, I can't, make, I can't, I, I it can't get my head around it. Because I, I can, I can <clears> imagine it being everything, but nothing and everything at the same time. You remind me now of, have you been to Waiting for Godot? No, I haven't, but we spoke about it oh, all that time. It reminds me of it now, like, as, you know, people say that, that, that you know, a, a review of it one time, I think it said that, well, it's a play in which nothing happens twice. <laughs> in the first half and the second half, you know. <laughs> um, do you know, and, 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 and the opening line of that is nothing to be done. Yeah. Which, so is, which ties into which the... Is, which is different than doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah, because the then you're trying to do nothing, yes, but nothing, to be, nothing to be done. But it's kind of like the opening, which is a nice way to bring it, because we're an hour and 15 minutes. To to but it, it links to the start of the poem at the very, very start, which is... Likely. Uh, yeah. Likely, child. The best advice ever given me. <sighs> Thank you very much. Yeah, 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 Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. You might come back again Thank you, sometime. Yeah, yeah, lovely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I could Brilliant. stay for a week. <laughs> <laughs> that's the sound of what happens today hi if you like the conversation that i just had and you'd like more please hit the subscribe button thank you Bye.